Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago, and today I'm going to be testing Hogwarts Legacy on the GTX 750Ti, the one and only legendary card from 2014. So I'm going to try different resolutions, no overclock as of right now, 1080p with FSR2 on performance, which is internally 540p, but the upscaler usually does a good job, and we're on a 750Ti, 2GB of VRAM, so we gotta make sacrifices. So we're going to try it like this. And yeah, I'm going to sound weird, but I'm going to try medium settings. I know, I know. But if this doesn't work properly, we're going to go directly to low, especially for the textures side of things. We'll see what happens. This is the first time I launched the game. The shaders just finished compiling and we're running into Hogwarts. So right away, we're going to a demanding area because the beginning of the game isn't demanding. Okay. We're at 27. Yeah, and the textures, holy hell. Yeah, they're not loading. So I was a little bit too ambitious with the settings. A little too ambitious, <laughs> to say the least. So what I'm going to do, because we have so much, so little GPU to work with, let's go for the lowest settings. Should have done that in the first place. And I forgot to switch off that fulfilled. But as you can see, 750Ti at the bottom. I had to try. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and everything on low. And let's try it again. Good thing the game changes settings in real time. Okay, it's a little bit better now. But still. Once we go outside, yeah, okay. Not too bad. Let me teleport super quickly and wait. I want to go for daytime. So it looks more clear to you guys. Is this daytime now? It doesn't seem to be. No, it's not daytime. But the main issue with the game is that when you're running around Hogwarts, you're going to run into stutter, quite a bit of stutter. And I see that the geometry is reduced significantly. Yeah, the textures are not loading, which makes sense. Only 2 gigs of VRAM, it has to compensate somehow. And we are on 1080p right now. So yeah. Let's teleport somewhere else. I want to go outside, that's usually the way to do it. So yeah, we go outside. Probably had to wait till daytime. We swap to 900p or 720p. We'll see. Probably 720. Seems to be more reasonable. But 1080p, as you can see, even with performance FSR2. Yeah, once we get up to a place with foliage, it wrecks the GPU. We're very close to 30, but not there constantly. Okay, guys, I'm back. And I stayed at 1080p because I was trying different upscalers and FSR 1.0, it's also available, as you can see. And this one works differently from FSR 2. FSR 2 usually requires, uh, is less of a performance improvement in general, but it looks way better. But here we have the same resolution, but on FSR 1.0 on performance. So it will look worse, of course, but I noticed that it's way more stable like this. Of course, 540p looks way blurrier, but we stay into the 30s more often, which is good. So this might be an option. It looks very blurry, but it's a 750 Ti. What were you expecting? It's not even in the minimum requirements. <laughs> so I'm pretty impressed right now. And as you can see, due to the low VRAM, textures and textures especially don't load or stay loading forever. So that's a VRAM limitation. But the game is playable. It takes some time to load the environments. But even when I go here outside, it's fine, actually. So yeah, 540p upscale to 1080p. Again, doesn't look particularly amazing. Although on low settings, it's pretty acceptable, considering it's low settings. But again, it's a 750Ti. The fact that it actually works like this is pretty impressive. 
Yeah, some stuff takes time to load. Come on, load that asset. Come on, asset. I know you're there. I'm waiting for you. Bring it on. Anyway, it's time to go for 720p and let's see what we can achieve at that resolution. Okay guys, we're now back into the game and as you can see, I'm at 720p. How did I change the resolution? You might be asking yourself. Well, you gotta go to Windows and change your desktop resolution because we only have windowed full screen and windowed. So that's how you do it. That's how you change this right away to force a lower resolution if you don't want to use the upscalers. On the settings, we're on the lowest settings. So let's get back into the game, shall we? And as you can remember, the settings were not... Uh, were not being... particularly great with the texture side. The Dalian keys are back. Aren't they brilliant? So on native 720, yeah, it drops below 30, which makes sense. I mean, we're on native 720p. This card is below the minimum requirements. So let's do a minor tweak. Let's use this time FSR2. Hopefully it's good enough in this case, which internally is 480p. So keep that in mind. And let's get back into the game. Let's see if we can get 30s now. Okay. Again, still looks blurry in comparison to 1080p performance. But it's much more consistently over 30. Textures still do not load properly, which again makes sense. We only have two gigabytes. Even my four gigabyte cards were getting maxed out. So we're going to see some bad looking materials such as this. So yeah, it's not perfect, but again, it's a 750Di in a new game. So on a game that is not even in the <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have this GPU in the minimum requirements. Okay, let me fast travel to a bigger spot. There we go. And I didn't test 900p because it seems redundant. I mean, between 1080p and 900p, there's not a huge pixel count difference. I don't think in this case it's worth doing. So again, expect broken materials like this. You can crank up textures to force higher quality stuff to pop in. But really, I do not know how that runs. And there was more stutter when I did that, so... Yeah. Handy resource indeed, your field guide. <laughs> So yeah, it's working. If you're here to know that, <laughs> there you go. It's working. You have to play at a pretty low resolution. It's still completely playable, in my opinion, because you do not need to squint to see what's in front of you, which is great, at least in my opinion. Considering we only have 2 gigs of VRAM, it blows my mind. It uses a lot of RAM, though. So yeah. Let's fast travel to Hawksmaid, which is one of the towns close by. It has more detail in some parts. And the issue inside Hogwarts is running around with more NPCs on screen usually makes the game stutter. Hopefully with a patch they improve on it. Okay, Hogsmaid now. This is a different place. Remember, this is an open world. You can go basically whatever you want. And as you can see here, it seems to be fine as well. Some minor stutter here and there. But so far, so good. Again, texture quality is going to be poor. We are only on 2 gigs of VRAM. But again, still pretty impressed <laughs> that it actually works. Mind blown. The 750 Di lives on. Fights for another day. Let's teleport back to Hogwarts. And let's go, I don't know, to the to this part. Just to verify. 
how it runs when I speed run through the castle. That was usually a problem on my other GPUs. But my advice is to lock it to 30, because inside the castle it can jump into the 60s like this. And it's not consistent at all in that regard. So you're getting 60s here, but then outside you get 30s, it's like all over the place. Oh yeah. Let's go, let's go, 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 go. Run. We gotta go downstairs. Okay, here we start dropping frames because more detail. That's why I recommend that 30 frames lock. This is what happens. Come on, stabilize. Yeah, especially when you open doors. It's pretty taxing. It's loading stuff very quickly. So do yourself a favor, lock it to 30. And enjoy yourself. Despite the broken materials. Anyway, yeah, and those <laughs> those materials on the characters, holy hell. Anyway, guys, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Hogwarts Legacy on the 750Ti. And yeah, broken textures, but still playable if you don't mind that. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend buying it in this state, but still, you can run it if you want to. Thank you, guys. See you next time.